All right, let's go to this conversation now. The electricity crisis is one of the big issues for South Africans, one that has found its way, in fact, to some of the election manifestos, if not all, as political parties table their proposals to end this particular crisis. But what are some of the thoughts around the proposals and the length of time they possibly might take to you know, reduce what we've now become known to as the rolling blackouts. Let's speak to Professor Hartmut Winkler, the Professor of Physics at the University of Johannesburg. Prof, thank you so much for your time. I mean, when you think rolling blackouts, people just sometimes you know, want to pull their hair out. But against the backdrop of so many competing interests, you know, especially for political parties who are tabling various promises ahead of the elections, where would you say the electricity crisis is in terms of rankings when looking at their manifestos? It's quite high up, uh, not surprisingly, especially if one compares this to the last general election where I, I looked at this, the three main parties and they on average devoted 2% of their manifesto to electricity. Now it's much higher. Uh, some party manifestos devote as much as 10% of their manifesto uh, um, to uh, this particular topic and uh, for other parties you can see it uh, speaking to almost every other point uh, so it's clearly an important issue and uh, of course if anybody had uh, the perfect solution to this uh, then this is clearly something that the electorate would welcome and might be persuaded to uh, to cast their vote for so it's not surprising I would, uh, that this is going to be one of the chief topics of this election, especially since going into winter, load sharing is likely to get a bit worse than what it is now. And you've written extensively about this particular subject. So, uh, you know, when you think about what we've gone through as a country when it comes to the rolling blackouts, mm -hmm. others even say that this is a self-created crisis. It could have been prevented and we shouldn't have found ourselves where we are right now. What impact then is this likely to have on the governing party, especially when you look at even some of what they proposed again in their manifesto around this issue? It's clearly a weak issue because uh, even by their own admission, they uh, haven't handled this uh, as well as they should have over the last 15 years. And uh, as much as they uh, have tried to uh, put some measures uh, up at the, uh, in the last couple of years to try and ameliorate the situation, the situation is so bad now that there is no quick way out, despite of what uh, a number of politicians have been saying, or uh, it, there simply isn't a quick route out of this. And it's interesting that I think all parties know that as much as they would like the electorate to believe that they have a silver bullet that will get us out of load shedding very quickly. Uh, I didn't see any party putting any sort of time frame as to when they think that they, their particular uh, means, route of getting out of load shedding is going to effect, uh, actually work. I think uh, it's, uh, uh, it's the projection is that if everything goes well, Load shedding should very gradually start getting uh, better and better, but we'll probably still have load shedding for another five years or so. So, um, um, yeah. Yeah, Action SA, um, you know, putting time frames at, at, at two years, saying that they'll be able to resolve the crisis in two years. But, I mean, in some of the instances, for example, when you think about some of the, pro you know, the, pro the proposed solutions by different political parties, they, you know, of course, in some, there's a bit of space that these proposals take up in their manifestos. But it also indicates how complex, as you said earlier, this issue is and how likely it is to cost us a bit more as a country in order to be mm. able to fix. But when you speak to people on the ground they say we want this problem fixed and fixed right now so if then there are no proposals that are looking at fixing and fixing it right now what are the chances of people believing political parties uh, yes well that well that's the thing if one compares the proposal there are different uh, uh, approaches and not surprisingly that the the parties that uh, favor free enterprise and, and and so on have gone for a uh, suggest that privatization is the way to go. It's almost uh, as though this will automatically somehow resolve uh, the, the situation. At the other end of the political spectrum, we're looking at uh, parties going as far as, as uh, wanting to nationalize whatever uh, private uh, power producers they are at, at the moment. So, uh, but ultimately, it, I think it's, it is, uh, certainly it, even apart from the fact of time, that it just simply is going to take some time to either fix the existing power station, which is what some of the proposals boil down to, 
or to build a whole lot of new plants, which is, I think, what most people uh, are looking at, it, it's going to take a while. And then the question is, how much is all this going to cost? Because mm -hmm. it's all very well uh, ordering the construction of a, a huge number of power plants, which uh, five years down the line will get us out of this crisis if we don't have the money for it. Uh, and, and, and all the money has to be taken away from other uh, portfolios. So uh, that's why I was a bit disappointed that none of the parties seem to have uh, looked at this from a cost analysis sort of perspective. In other words, saying what exactly, why are you suggesting that your option is financially, economically the, the, the best solution? It, it, there was a lot of saying, yes, we need to build this, we need to build that. And uh, eventually, somehow, this will, will solve the situation. But I, I would have hoped for a little bit more of a nuance in the proposals. I, I should either say that there are some proposals which are quite good. There are others which are pretty bad. I don't want to sort of name specific parties. I think that uh, I'd encourage the public to try and read through some of these proposals. But you can see where some of the thinking is. Uh, I think a lot of uh, a lot of the proposals are also based on what has worked uh, internationally, which may or may not work so well here. But I think that's probably more or less the direction in which uh, the country is going. And you think uh, about, uh, uh, pardon me, pardon yeah. me, you think about, you know, some of the uh, the discussions and proposals around privatization, nationalization, renewables and all of that. But uh, th there's been some who say that there's a chance that South Africa may find itself in a coalition arrangement um, should, mm -hmm. you know, the election result then come. In the event that that happens, would you say there are some areas for you as much as you've, you know, seen and read through some of the manifestos where you think the political parties could speak in one voice on this issue? Yes, well, on some topics, probably no. Uh, there are some parties who have clearly favoured going almost entirely the renewables route and just uh, uh, you know, building solar and wind plants and nothing else. Uh, there's other parties who uh, want to build nuclear plants or want to just uh, build new coal plants and so on. So uh, in that respect, we probably aren't going to see convergence. However, there's one aspect where practically every party sees things the same, and that's that the country should be encouraging more and more solar rooftop. Uh, and you see that right across from, from the, whether you're talking about Freedom Front plus EFF or whatever, they all have that as a suggestion in their proposal. Uh, the question is just how, how does that get financed? In some cases, uh, the people are talking about tax breaks, uh, uh, or almost like a, a, a subsidy, almost like a donation. Every house should have one of those. I think that's probably in 30 years' time, that is indeed where we are going to be. But the question is, uh, if we are going to do that, uh, where exactly is the money going to come from? But that at least is something where everybody seems to agree. And it, it will make an impact. Uh, there are countries, uh, I listened to a presentation about Australia, uh, where they told us how many households there have solar on the roof. The idea that you can actually feed that power back into the grid. So you have this odd situation where every single house which has a solar system is potentially a micro power plant. Okay, you, you need to be, uh, uh, the organization of that is very difficult and so on, but it, it's, that's where, where countries are looking at. So oddly enough, this is something where I think everybody is more or less in agreement. And I think that's ultimately probably what's uh, where most of the progress is going to be. Quite an interesting one, Prof. Thank you so much for your time and your insights this evening. Appreciate them. That is uh, Professor Hartmut Winkler, the Professor of Physics at the University of Johannesburg. On that note, Oli is coming up next in sport.